Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I have a video for you from Judge Kirkham in Michigan. He's holding an evidentiary hearing on contempt. And I'll let you figure this one out, but um, I'm sorry if there's any glitches or problems. I use Filmora on my iPad, and today they decided that the app is gonna no longer work on an iPad. So I'm using my phone on a little two inch screen. So forgive me, I'll let you guys watch. The 37th Circuit Court is now in session with the Honorable Brian K. Kirk and presiding. It is Thursday, September 26th, 2024 at 8.33 a.m. For case number 2011-2274-DS, Rebecca Fletcher versus Paul Franzman, Attorney Henderson for the plaintiff and Attorney Todd for the defendant. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Uh, good morning, our I'll ask, uh, this is the evidentiary hearing on the defendant's motion to hold plaintiff in contempt. Uh, Mr. Todd, are you ready to proceed? I am, Your Honor. Okay, and Ms. Henderson, are you ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Todd, do you wish to make an opening statement or proceed to your proofs? Uh, I'll briefly make an opening statement. Okay. Your Honor, in this particular case, it was... Uh, ordered to agree to a counselor and have that process started for both co-parent counseling as well as for the minor child. Uh, the agreement for the counselor for the minor child was made on 610 to use comforts of home. We filed our motion on September 4th. At that point, the child still had not been seen by the counselor outside of an intake three months after the agreement was made. Additionally, it was ordered that the parties would engage in co-parent counseling. Again, an agreement was made on 610 to use Margaret Hunter. However, as of the date that the motion was filed, September 4th, Margaret Hunter's last email indicated she had not been able to coordinate a time with the defendant yet. It was also ordered that the parties would use our family wizard to communicate. <clears throat> this is an ongoing issue where Ms. Fletcher will continue to not read or respond to messages. Most recently, she waited weeks to respond to requests about the child's counseling. She has already been found in contempt for violating the Our Family Wizard order previously with the referee. All these things individually may seem trivial. However, together, that's the concern. In essence, the child needs to go to counseling to work through her emotions and see Mr. Franzman uh, so he can facilitate getting his parents' time back on track. Uh, and Miss, Mr. Franzman and Ms. Fletcher need to use co-parent counseling to facilitate their communication. In essence, Ms. Fletcher is continuing to uh, drag her feet and basically prevent this process from moving forward. And that's the larger issue here. So we are respectfully requesting she be held in contempt and we believe the proofs show that she should be. Okay, thank you. Ms. Henderson, do you wish to make an opening statement, reserve uh, your opening statement or wait your opening statement? I will proceed, Your Honor. Okay. Um, the issues brought up to the court all have been at this point resolved, Your Honor. We have no problem with responding to messages within 24 hours on our family wizard, so long as that rule applies to both parties. And testimony of my client shows that Mr. Franzman frequently does ignore her messages or non responds to them, uh, making some comments not relevant to the message that was sent. Further, the child had a counseling appointment uh, on September 18th, as we stated in our response. She is scheduled for another appointment on October 2nd, and testimony will show that the delay in scheduling has nothing to do with my client's intent not to follow a court order. It had to do with availability of counselors, with work schedule, school schedule, things of that nature, Your Honor. And further, co-parenting counseling also has been scheduled. In fact, my client had an appointment with Mar Margaret Hunter. She has another one scheduled for Monday. And if Margaret Hunter was subpoenaed today, which she will not be attending the hearing from what I understand, uh, due to her opinion that this is absolutely premature, um, she will testify that uh, the only reason that co-parenting counseling scheduling was delayed was due to insurance issues that had to be figured out before she was able to schedule those appointments. Those issues have now been resolved and my client has already had one session with her and will have another one on Monday of next week. 
This is yet another motion filed for defendant. And all of these motions, Your Honor, have absolutely nothing to do with making sure the order is followed because currently all the issues are in fact resolved. All of these motions have punitive um, intent. Rebecca must pay, Rebecca must be punished, where in fact the issue has in itself already been resolved or could be resolved by addressing it with the co-parenting counselor. Yet every time defendant chooses to file a motion and costs both parties significant amount of money, time, and other resources. Previous motions have resulted in days of hearings stretched over over 12 month period of time. And if the intent of defendant is in fact to attain compliance with the orders, commencement of services that has been done at this point, Your Honor, and there's no need to have this hearing. Contempt of court is a willful act. Statement omission that is essentially intended to undermine court's authority or impede the functioning of the court. Testimony will show there is absolutely no intent to not follow a court order or otherwise um, undermine the authority of the court on behalf of my client. The primary purpose of contempt of court is to preserve the effectiveness and sustain the party's right to compel compliance with orders. As evident, intent is absolutely necessary, Your Honor, for the court to find a party in contempt. The miscommunication and other collateral issues such as insurance issues or scheduling, availability of counselors have absolutely nothing to do with my client's intent, which is necessary for finding her in contempt. The orders are still in full force and effect and at this point are being followed. So, Your Honor, we respectfully request that my client not be held in contempt. Contempt power must be used by the court very sparingly and only when it's unequivocally shown that there is intent to not comply with the court orders, <clears throat> which in this case has not taken place. Further, Your Honor, the parties have joint legal custody. Mr. Franzman could have taken all the steps that he expected my client to take that were delayed for reasons of scheduling or miscommunication to get those appointments on the books. In fact, our testimony will show that in one of the Our Family Wizard communications, I think on two occasions, Mr. Franzman said that he would set up both the co-parenting counseling and the child's counseling, and yet he turns around and files a motion to hold my client in contempt, Your Honor. Again, this is a pattern of behavior. It's punitive in nature. It's not fair to my client. Um, so we respectfully ask that she not be held in contempt. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Todd, you can proceed. Thank you, Connor. Uh, your Honor, I guess is uh, Dawn Lawrence from Comforts of Home. Is she in the waiting room? Yes, she is. Let me bring her in. Great, thank you. Please unmute Ms. Lawrence. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Good, how are you? Good. Good. Ms. Lawrence, we're going to take some testimony from you, so I'd ask you to raise your right hand. We'll have you sworn in, then we'll proceed. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Go ahead when you're ready, Mr. Todd. Thank you, Honor. Uh, Ms. Lawrence, where are you currently employed? Uh, Comforts of Home Counseling. Okay. And how long have you been employed there? Uh, I mean, about six, seven years. Okay. And, uh, well, actually, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a proposed exhibit up on the screen. Uh, Ms. Lawrence, can you see this exhibit? Yes. Okay. Do you remember this letter at all? Yes. The one that I just uh, addressed to Paul? Uh, yes, I believe so. Yes. Okay. 
Um, and you recognize this letter? Yes. You were the one who wrote it? Yes. Is this a modified change or redacted in any way? No. It's an accurate copy of the letter that you wrote on August 29th? Yes. Okay. And why did you write this letter? <clears throat> uh, because Mr. Franzman called and inquired if his daughter had an appointment yet with our office. And I told him, no, she did not. And uh, so the, the, the letter, I believe it states, it's a little bit small, so I'll just read it quickly. Any an intake assessment was done 718 at the conclusion of intake clients. Mom, Rebecca Fletcher indicated she did not want to start counseling till school resumed. A call was placed to mom on 813 to get Macy scheduled with Diana Keith. There's been no return call as of yet. Is that Correct. what that letter states? Correct. Okay. Um, and it, it, at the time you wrote that letter, it was that accurate? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I have nothing further, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, Ms. Henderson, any cross? Absolutely, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, good morning, Ms. Lawrence. Did good I morning. pronounce your name correctly? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, isn't it true that you, in fact, uh, left a voicemail to Rebecca asking to give you a call back and to figure out scheduling details? Yeah, on 813. And if I played that voicemail, would you recognize it? Yes. Your Honor, may I please play a recording? Yes, go ahead. That was shared with Mr. Todd. For technological difficulties, I'm not sure if I'll be able to play it through the computer. If not, my, my client will just play it through her phone, if that's okay. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Um, it will not allow me to play when Zoom is going. Rebecca, can you please play that voicemail? Sure. Thank you. Just put it to the microphone. Okay. <clears throat> hey, Rebecca, this is Dawn from Comfort Home Counseling. I was just calling to set up uh, Macy with Deanna. Uh, Shelly's not going to have any openings at the 4 p.m. when school starts, so I'm going to get her into Deanna instead. Give me a call when you get a chance, 269-275-1397, and I do have clients um, until uh, 3.30 today, so um, anytime after 3.30, or else you can just leave a message, and I can schedule her with Deanna um, after 4 p.m. and let you know what time. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Ms. Lawrence, do you recognize that voicemail? Yep. Is that, the, in fact, the voicemail that you left for Ms. Fletcher? Yes. And are there any changes to it or deletions, additions? No. So is it true, in fact, that during your initial intake appointment on 718 or thereabouts, it was not Rebecca's desire to start school or to start counseling after school? It was, in fact, your suggestion to start counseling after school resumes to avoid scheduling con uh, conflicts and things of that nature. No, that's incorrect. Okay, so what do you believe was stated during that um, appointment? The conversation during intake was that I would see if Shelly had any openings for Macy, which I told her likely she wouldn't because Shelly's pretty full. Um, and at that time, Rebecca said that was okay because they were gonna wait till school resumed anyways to start counseling. So that's how the conversation went. Okay. Um, are you also familiar that uh, the owner of your practice submitted a letter that stated that Rebecca's behavior in no way is to be construed as avoidance of counseling or avoidance of scheduling? Yes, I'm aware. And you agree with that, correct? I do agree. Okay. So could it be that there was just a delay of a return call for whatever reason? on behalf of my client? Sure. And are you aware that she in fact did call back on uh, August 28th, which is a day before you submitted that letter? No, I'm not aware of that. Okay. Are you aware that she in fact left a voicemail in your general um, 964 number voicemail box? No, I'm not aware of that. Okay. Uh, did you review your voicemails? Um. I only have access to my cell phone, which is uh, 
well, obviously my number. So no, I don't have access to our comfort zone voicemail. Okay. So it is absolutely possible that there was in fact a return call from my client that you're not aware of that was left in the practice voicemail, correct? Correct. Thank you. And um, are you aware if since the letter was written, the, the child had in fact had a counseling appointment? Um, the only thing I'm aware of is that uh, an appointment is set up for 10 to at 5 p.m. Okay. And are you able to check if she in fact had an appointment on September 18th? Yeah, I can check that. Could you please do that and then let the court know when you've done that? Sure. <clears throat> so yes, there's a chart entry from 918 at 5 p.m. by Deanna. So the child did have an appointment on 518, or I'm sorry, 918? It appears so. Okay, thank you. And she has another one scheduled in two weeks from that date on 10-2, correct? Correct. And are you aware if uh, she's on a biweekly track? I'm not aware of what they discussed, no. Okay. So again, uh, you do not disagree with the statement of your practice owner that my client in no way intended not to schedule counseling or refuse to schedule counseling. Objection, no. Your Honor. I believe that's speculation. Uh, Ms. I'm asking of Ms. Lawrence's opinion. I'm asking if she agrees with that statement. That's not a speculation. Mr. Tag. Uh, Your Honor, I, I believe it is, and I believe that that is the, the court's discretion to determine that. Okay. Court will uh, sustain the objection. I, I, it is a decision that the court's going to have to make in this particular matter, and I don't think that the, this witness will add any light to that, so I will sustain it. Thank you, Your Honor. I think um, she already testified to that earlier. Okay, thank you. I have no further Mr. Anderson, questions. I don't need editorial comment. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions of Ms. Lawrence? No. Okay. Mr. Todd, any uh, redirect? Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Ma'am, that will conclude your testimony. You're free to go. Have a great day. Thanks. You too. Mr. Todd, you did not uh, offer your exhibit. Was it your intent to or just to display that and question on it? Your Honor, I believe the, uh, I mean, the, the record would reflect that she indicated this was uh, accurate. I, I guess I would, at this point, I would move to have exhibit two offered. You have that down as two? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, Ms. Henderson, any uh, response on the offer of the exhibit? No objection. Okay. The uh, defendant's exhibit two will be admitted. Thank you, Your Honor. Next witness, Mr. Todd? Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to call uh, Mr. Franzman, Paul Franzman. Okay. Mr. Franzman, uh, we're going to, uh, why don't you take that down, Mr. Todd? Yeah. So, yeah, sorry. Mr. Franzman, we're going to uh, take some testimony from you. So if you would raise your right hand, we'll have you sworn in and then we'll proceed. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, go ahead, Mr. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Franzman, could you actually facilitate Macy being in counseling? No. Okay. And why is that? Uh, because Macy ignores my phone calls and texts 
and Rebecca ignores my text through my family wizard. So you don't have Macy. You couldn't take her to any counseling, even if you set it up. Is that accurate? Correct. Um, is it your understanding comforts of home was agreed upon on 610? Yes. And uh, were you told by them that you need to do anything else to facilitate Macy going to counseling? No. Um, eventually, did Ms. Fletcher reach out, reach out to Comforts of Home? Um, eventually, yes. I mean, Macy has now been there as of this last week, so yes. And uh, any idea when that first was? I, I believe we had an evidentiary hearing previously, um, and that it was stated that she hadn't done that prior to that evidentiary hearing. Do you recall when that evidentiary hearing was? Um, no. Okay. But it's your understanding that there was an intake on 718? Yes. And uh, did you ever indicate or did the court ever indicate that Macy was not to start counseling until after school started? No. And is there any other reason why, to the best of your knowledge, uh, counseling couldn't have occurred prior to four o'clock during the summer? No. Did Ms. Fletcher actually need anything from you to start facilitating counseling? No. Have you done everything you can to help facilitate counseling for the child? Yes. Have you messaged Ms. Franzman through Our Family Wizard for that? Ms. Fletcher, yes. I, I apologize. It's okay. And what was her response? I did not get a response. And then I re-asked 15 days later. And then after filing another motion, she finally responded. But the, the response had nothing to do with actual giving me information of if, if a appointment was scheduled. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do another share screen. Um, uh, Mr. Franzman, can you see this uh, proposed exhibit one? Yes. Uh, do you, how did I receive this exhibit? I sent it to you. And what does this exhibit purport to be? This is a text message regarding the questions if Macy had therapy scheduled yet um, through our family wizard. And is this an accurate depiction of what you sent me? Yes. Has it been modified or changed in any way? No. Um, and so can... Your Honor, I would move to admit proposed exhibit one. Ms. Henderson, any response? Um, Mr. Todd, can you scroll down, please? What do you consider to be? Okay, just thank one, you. One That's page. just one page. Yeah, no, no objection. Okay. okay. Defendant's exhibit one will be admitted. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Franzman, so is it accurate that you messaged Rebecca on 820? Correct. And then uh, you needed to follow up on 9-4, is that correct? Correct. And then you received a response not until 9-5, is that accurate? Correct. And is this particular exhibit indicative of what happens when you try to communicate with Ms. Fletcher? Correct. If I do get a response, it does not even relate to the question asked, which are always about Macy and very basic. And we've had to file multiple motions before I even get a response. This response was 16 days after I sent the message and it was after we had to file a motion. So it's, it's been, it's been historical that to get a response, I have to file a motion, which is unfortunate. Mr. Todd, just do not to interrupt. Could you scroll down so I can see the last message? Yep. Okay, thanks. Yep. And, Thank and you. yeah, absolutely. 
And Mr. Franzman, for the court's clarification, this goes in reverse chronological order, is that right? Correct. The, the original message is at the bottom. It's how our family wizard exports messages. Okay. But this one is very much, if you see, I sent a message at 820 asking if it was scheduled. I had not heard anything by September 4th. So that's 14 days later. So I asked kindly to respond. Um, and then she did respond 16 days after the last message. And it did not give a answer as to when it was scheduled. The only way I found out it was scheduled is through the original this this filing of um whatever we call this i'm sorry um when we met with the judge a week ago or that's the first time i had heard it was actually scheduled so i'm not i am i i had no idea and then this just talks about going back to maridessa which was not effective then we all agreed on that and with the referee I'm going to go ahead and stop stop the screen share for now, if that's okay. That's fine. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Franzman, <clears throat> are you and Rebecca doing co-parent counseling yet? No. And was that agreed upon on 610 as well? Yes. Have you done everything to facilitate that? Yes, I was in contact with uh, Ms. Hunter, and I did my intro with her on, I believe, I, and I sent you those records, I believe it was August 2nd. We had our intro, so almost two months ago now. Um, she had all the information from me and needed to get it all from Rebecca. And the way Margaret Hunter start is, is she meets with each person individually and then starts co-parenting counseling. And in my conversations with Margaret Izaneva of last week or earlier this week, she told me Becky, Rebecca. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Okay, Mr. Todd. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll move forward. Okay. Okay. Well, we still don't have a, we still don't have co-parenting counseling scheduling and I've done everything I can. And, um, to the best of your knowledge, are you aware of this progressing in any way with Miss Miss Hunter after we filed a motion? After we filed a motion, to my knowledge, there was a intro meeting with Rebecca yesterday, and that and nothing between nothing prior to us filing a motion. Is that accurate, to the best of your knowledge? Correct. Okay. Um. I'll go ahead and share one last exhibit. Mr. Franzman, do you uh, recognize this exhibit, proposed exhibit three? Yes. And what does this proposed exhibit purport to be? It is, it is emails between Margaret Hunter and myself trying to get this co-parenting counseling started and scheduled. And how did I receive this? I sent it to you via email. And is this an accurate depiction of this email string? Correct. Yes. Have I modified or changed or redacted this in any way? No. Um, and, and so uh, it, it looks like you reached out to um, Ms. Hunter on July 16th. Is that right? Correct. And then... Um, you, in essence, just waited to, to see if she had done anything with uh, Ms. Fletcher. Is that accurate? Well, between July 16th and that time, I had my intro with her. I believe I sent that to you, and that was August 2nd. So it, her and I, again, she likes to talk to each person individually before meeting together. So I talked to her on August 2nd, and then I was in a waiting. And then you see on August 22nd, I reached back out to her. Um, and then by August 26, I had heard that things still weren't. She just said she hasn't been able to get things sorted. I asked if she had things sorted with Rebecca so we could start co-parenting counseling. And on August 26, she said she had not been able to. Okay. 
Your Honor, I'm going to object. Ms. Hunter is not here to verify that that was, in fact, her response. That is hearsay, and I'm assuming the admission of this exhibit has the goal of that statement being submitted into the record. Ms. Hunter should be here to testify about that. Mr. Todd? Your Honor, I, I well, I agree to a certain extent, but um, I'm just using this currently to refresh Mr. Franzman's recollection of the events in the time frame. Well, if it's being offered to refresh and not uh, introduced, then the court uh, believes it's appropriate and I'll uh, overrule the objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Franzman, so are you aware of what has happened since that point? I am not. My last communication with Margaret Hunter was the that the intro was going to happen with Rebecca yesterday and potentially we could have our first co-parenting counseling session uh, to today being Thursday at 6 p.m. and I let Margaret know that I was available so just let me know which I have not heard from her so unless I haven't heard from her yet today or last night but it was the, the the last communication was we potentially had our first co-parenting counseling appointment. We could possibly do it at 6 p.m. tonight. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing now. But and, again, uh, I, have not, I have not heard back if that's happening or not. Okay. And Mr. Franzman, have you tried to reach out to um, uh, Ms. Fletcher about co-parent counseling as well? I, I have. And what is the response? I don't get responses. Okay. Very similar to what uh, the previous exhibit one, is that accurate? Correct. That's, it's, yes. And there's a, an argument that this is in essence punitive and we are kind of doing this simply to, I, I don't know, get back or anything. Is that the reason why you've had to file these motions? No, no, that's just, yeah, no, no. It's it's because I don't hear back in the, the, the way I am able to ideally progress my daughter getting in counseling so we can get back to our normal schedule is by filing a motion because I get zero communication from Rebecca unless I do this and as you see, I waited 16 days. I, it took 16 days to get a response and the response still didn't answer the question when the counseling was scheduled. The only time I heard an actual date of counseling being scheduled is but through court when we all were here in front of judge as an intro last week or the week before. That's the first time I had actually heard a date. And Mr. Pronsman, is there anything else you'd like to uh, let the court know today? I mean, I, I guess I would like the court to know what that Rebecca was just held in contempt for the same exact thing through the referee within the last, at the end of the referee hearing, and it, it still hasn't changed. I mean, I'll, I'll, all I need is clear communication and, you know, it goes back to the same thing over the last year. I, I, my, my daughter has been allowed to decide to come here or not come here. Your Honor, you know. I'm going to object. Uh, Mr. Franzman is testifying as to facts not relevant to this proceeding and not in evidence. Okay, Mr. Todd, what's your response? Your Honor, I, I, um, I, I would agree to a certain extent that it's a little bit out there, but at the same point, I believe it's absolutely relevant because unfortunately this is, the totality is the problem. Um, I mean, had Ms. Fletcher you know, been compliant and promptly done counseling, been compliant and promptly communicated with Mr. Franzman, we wouldn't be here. Macy would be in counseling and hopefully this whole issue could have been resolved. Okay. Well, why don't you move on, Mr. Todd? I, I, I think yep. I'll leave that to you in your closing argument. Absolutely. We'll do. Uh, nothing further of this witness, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Henderson, uh, any uh, cross-examination? Um, yes. Mr. Franzman, is it true that you have joint legal custody with Ms. Fletcher? Correct. So it is absolutely true that you have access to the portal that is set up for Macy in the comforts of home, and you can look up any dates for scheduled appointments. I do not know that. Okay. I can't answer that. But it's true that you have access to the portal. In fact, you're the one that set up that portal. Is that correct? 
I, uh, yeah, yes, okay. yes. Um, so is it true that you could have scheduled appointments and communicated with Ms. Fletcher? This is when the appointment is scheduled for. <laughs> well, anything could be true, but when I do not see Macy or have any communication with the two, I do not see how that makes any sense. I mean, and I could schedule I could schedule appointments for anybody. It doesn't mean they're going to go if I don't have the ability to make it happen. And it's true that you, in fact, stated to Ms. Fletcher that you will schedule both co-parenting and child's counseling appointments, correct? I offered that up as, and this was during our uh, referee hearings, far before the end of our referee hearings. Well, so you did really, I'm sorry. I am, willing, I am willing to schedule things. However, when I'm not hearing back and my daughter is not at my house, it does not seem to make sense that that would work. And that was prior to all the changes from Mayor Odessa to Comforts at Home and our and the end of our referee hearing. So I will screen share. Do you recognize this? Yes. Okay. These are in fact your our family wizard messages with Ms. Fletcher, correct? There are a portion of them, yes. And so the counselor was agreed upon on 610, and on 619, you, in fact, stated to Rebecca, I will, not I'm willing to, I will book her counseling along with our co-parent counseling and will communicate the dates and times. Is that correct? Correct. And but the, the intros had to happen before anything could be scheduled. So I would try not to allude this to being something that is not. Rebecca had not done the, and as a fact, I will say I did try to do that, correct? I tried to get it scheduled with both places and let me use our co-parent counseling as a point. I reached out to, I reached out to Margaret. Sorry, I'll get their names between the two of them. And the the whatever that needed to be sorted out hadn't happened, and Rebecca's intro had not been happened until yesterday. But you're here testifying that you are unable to do all these things, where you in fact have joint legal. Well, I don't think I don't think unable is the right word. Honor, I, I think... apologize. Could you please instruct the witness not to interrupt the question? Okay. I'm sorry, no. you asked me a question. Just just wait until she finishes her question. Okay. You testified you have joint legal custody and you in fact confirmed that you stated to my client you will book those appointments. So okay. how is it that it's her fault that those appointments have not been scheduled? The intro to Margaret Hunter is my understanding with Rebecca and you may know better than me but it was yesterday. And I have already worked with Margaret Hunter saying we could do it tonight. She was going to talk to Rebecca to see if that worked, which I have not heard back from. Your Honor, I would ask for plaintiffs um, three to be admitted. I'm sorry, I'm just going to go by what we have marked it as. Okay. Uh, one thing I would like to say about that oh, is that stop, something... stop, sir. We're introducing okay. an exhibit. Mr. Todd, what's your response? Uh, Your Honor, if I could scroll down a little bit, it says this is page one of two. Um, actually, sorry, that got in there. That's the second page. I think that is part of what you have admitted, Wes. So, any, disregard this. Do you uh, need any more scroll down, Mr. Todd, or not? Yeah, specifically, I, I'm. Uh, this not, is the message. The the circled message is what I'm focusing the court's attention on. Your Honor, I would object. That's not page two of that exhibit. If you Honor, specifically, I'm asking to introduce this page one, the message from six nineteen with the circled message from Mr. Franzman that he already authenticated, that he stated he would schedule those appointments. Okay, if, if she only introduces the one page, is that uh, acceptable, Mr. Todd? Well, Your Honor, I, I guess that's my concern is I don't know what the other page says 
but before this, um, but I, I guess I would believe if my client authenticated that particular statement, I, I don't necessarily know if it's necessary to have that exhibit admitted. Okay, well, we, we'll admit it with the idea that, uh, Mr. Todd, if you have some additional pages that go with this, then that, you can uh, Your Honor, that them. is the second page. I apologize. The, the, the exhibit four just got in between. This is the message that starts on page one, and this is page two. So that has already been admitted as um, defendant's exhibit, I believe, three, the messages from September. Well, Mr. Todd, uh, obviously so, can't review all but of But specifically, I'm interested in this, Your Honor. Thank Ms. you. Ms. Henderson, don't interrupt me, please. Uh, Mr. Todd has not have all of those ex those exhibits or the pages, so he can't tell whether it's the first page or not. But we, as I say, we will admit it because he's authenticated the message of uh, 619. But I'm leaving it up to Mr. Todd if there's other pages that he wished to introduce to give substance to it, that he can do that. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I apologize. I, I think I let Christy know and the court may know yes. that I have a settlement conference at 9 15. Yep. We will take, uh, you said a 15 minute recess. Yeah, that should be totally fine. Okay. We'll, we'll resume back at uh, 9 30. So we are back on the record. Okay. Mr. Franzman, uh, Unmute yourself. And uh, do you have more questions, Ms. Henderson, of uh, Mr. Franzman? I do. Okay. Mr. Franzman, isn't it true that you could have taken Macy to those appointments if you were to schedule them? No. Why is that? Uh, because I am not able to get her. I mean, I don't, I think that's been pretty clear over the last year of the conversations. Is it because your relationship with Macy is so strained that she will not Objection, Your Honor. communicate that not, with you? That is outside these proceedings. Okay. Ms. Henderson, what's your response? Your Honor, I think it's absolutely relevant. Uh, again, the parties have joined custody, yet... My client is being put with the total responsibility for not only scheduling, but also taking the child to those appointments. And those appointments are uh, largely necessary because of the strained relationship that the child well, has with the defendant. If I can answer how no, I'm on you can't, answer. sir. Sir, wait until we're done with the objection. Okay. Okay. Well, I... I I don't think, I think it does go beyond the scope of this particular hearing, which is to simply find if the plaintiff is in contempt and I understand and court has given you leeway, but the fact is, I think the letter, record's already established by, by virtue of these the prior orders in this matter, that there's no communication, no contact between, you know, the defendant and the child. So I think it is, uh, I don't want to say wishful thinking, but it's clearly speculative as to whether he'd have any opportunity to simply schedule an appointment, and take the child when he when he's not getting any contact. So I'm going to I'm going to uh, sustain the objection. Move on, Miss Anderson. Thank Regarding, you. Oh, I'm sorry, Wesley, what did you say? I just said thank you. Oh, um. Mr. Franzman, regarding your intake appointment with Ms. Hunter that you, you state you had on August 2nd, did you communicate about that appointment with Ms. Fletcher? Uh, I don't believe so. In fact, you didn't bring up the issue of co-parenting counseling again until that motion uh, was filed sometime in the beginning of September, correct? I'm not aware that I needed to follow up on it. We had it already established. Well, you just testified that the way co-parenting counseling works is it requires both of your intakes to be taken and then possibly a unified appointment scheduled for both of you. So now you're saying you didn't think you needed to communicate with Ms. Fletcher to check in whether she had hers. I'm trying to reconcile those two statements. When I, when I try to check with Rebecca on anything, I do not hear back until I file a motion 
when we were in court last time, everybody agreed we would use Har Margaret Hunter, and we were both to get in contact with Margaret Hunter, which I did. So I did what I could do. And regarding this and Comforts of Home, I, st I and I started the initial contact with Comforts of Home, going back to the message in our family wizard that you wanted to make as an exhibit. I mean, I've done everything I can do. So... And it's true, in fact, that um, Ms. Fletcher had some insurance issues that precluded her from proceeding with the initial intake with Ms. Hunter. You're aware of that, correct? No. I, how would I be aware of that? I... You also stated earlier that when you communicate with Ms. Fletcher, she, if response, does not actually answer the question. You do the same yeah. thing, isn't it true? No, it's not. What are the questions? So I'm going I mean, to are, share a message. I mean, all of our messages were, there, were so shared. There's no question on the floor right this time, so just okay. wait. Do you recognize this uh, message report? Uh, yes. Those are, in fact, messages between you and Miss. Fletcher, correct? Correct. Okay. So I'm going to direct your attention to this message that was sent to you by Ms. Fletcher on 9-5, expressing extreme concern about your girlfriend stalking Macy while she was shopping. I, I, I believe what you just said is very harassing and out of line. So and if I may read the message... This is what Rebecca said she heard from her sister. And what I heard is her sister started a argumentative fight with my fiance. And nobody is stalking anybody. So these, these words are harassing and meant to entice an argument. So this message. Harassing. Your Honor. Go ahead. Don't interrupt, sir. This message states, Macy was at Kohl's last Sunday, 825, with my sister, Ray and Frank, Tiffany and Lexi, and her Objection, daughter. Your Honor, this is nothing that Mr. Yeah. Franzman or the or uh, Ms. Fletcher have any information on. This is a recollection of somebody else. Okay. Ms. Your Anderson, Honor, what's your response? I am not introducing the message for the truth of the content. I'm simply showing the pattern that the response that Mr. Franzman gives is completely non-substantive to the message that was sent to him. So this goes both ways to both parties. Well, I'll allow for that limited purpose. <clears throat> um, so bottom line, Ms. Fletcher outlines what happened. And your response is simply, that is not what I heard happened, but you can write any lie you want and try to pass it on as truth. That is your response to that statement, correct? So I can talk now? Yep. She, okay. asked if that, she asked if that response was correct, sir. If you want to read the entire message from Rebecca starting, this message has nothing to do with about scheduling therapy or getting co-parenting counseling scheduled. Rebecca texted me talking about something that's hearsay that we both heard different things. And her message was on September 5th at 6.19 p.m. I responded at 6.24 p.m. indicating that I respond very quickly. And I told her that's not what I heard happen, yes. And then it also says, bottom line is you and I need to communicate and build a healthy relationship, along with Macy getting into counseling and actually talking rather than learning to throw away family as acceptable behavior. So I would I would read both messages rather than what's just circled, but I have nothing wrong with what is circled, too. So you just testified that um, essentially your communication has to revolve around Macy that message was directly about Macy, and it shows the pattern that your responses are inflammatory and not productive as well, as stated by you can write any lie you want and try to pass it on as truth. Do you think that is productive? I, I completely disagree with what you're saying. 
and I think you're picking little parts of messages. And I don't think I, I don't think what I said was any different of what she says. I believe is a lie, and she. I don't know why she wanted to put in a message, but she did. Your Honor, again, to and show that I, I would believe, if anything, my message says we need to communicate and build a healthy relationship. We could Your circle Honor. that part too. Your Honor, I would ask for plaintiffs exhibit four to be admitted as authenticated by Mr. Franzman. Okay, Mr. Todd, any response? No objection. Uh, plaintiffs exhibit four will be admitted, there being no objection. Thank you. <clears throat> as it relates to the counseling, do you dispute that Macy has had an appointment now and is scheduled for another appointment? No. Okay. And do you dispute that when a counselor is changed, there are some scheduling issues that may come up? That's, I, I am not, I, I don't dispute or agree. I mean, it's, it's a matter of being in contact and openly communicating and working with the offices. I mean, if I can't say yes or no to that question. Because you stated you are not able to take Macy. Do you disagree that scheduling and actually producing the child for counseling falls on my client? Um, Objection, Your Honor. I, I believe that this has been beaten yeah. up. I think we all have this understanding of what Ms. Henderson has tried to elicit, yeah. and I think that's been beat to death. Well, I think it is somewhat redundant, uh, Ms. Henderson. Please move on. Thank you, Your Honor. You also stated in your earlier testimony you had no idea why an appointment before 4 o'clock in the summer would not be possible. Is it true that you are very frequently out of town? And if it was your ability to take the child, you wouldn't be there to produce the child for counseling during the summer before 4 o'clock? No. no. Are you aware that my client works until four o'clock and is not able to take extensive time off work to schedule appointments for the child before four o'clock? No. Okay. Your Honor, I have no further questions. Okay. Mr. Todd, any uh, redirect? Uh, yep. Yeah, briefly, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Franzman, if we could, uh, Anya, if you could pull that uh, exhibit four back up. Thank you. And Mr. Franzman, so um, is this her response in essence to your asking about counseling? Uh, it's part of that same text thread, so yes. And so in essence, she brought up something that was totally unrelated to counseling, is that correct? Correct. And this is, you're just trying to get to the counseling and she brings up some incident that happened in Coles that you weren't there and she wasn't there. Is that accurate? Correct. Um, and then if, uh, uh, Ms. Henderson, if you could scroll to the top of that. And then your statement um, in essence is basically saying that, you know, I don't know what happened at Coles or whatever. And then trying to get her back on track, trying to, uh, communicate and build a healthy relationship instead of counseling. Is that accurate? Correct. So is their proposed exhibit or their admitted exhibit for indicative of what happens? Yes. Yes. Nothing further, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Ms. Henderson, any uh, recross? I'll follow up on that, Your Honor. Mr. Franzman, yes. isn't it true that, in fact, prior to bringing that incident up that is directly relevant to your child, Ms. Fletcher, uh, in fact, wrote, I have been in contact with the office. I will be following up in the morning as they do not have an explanation as to what happened with getting Macy on the schedule. Is that correct? <laughs> yes, that's what that says. Correct. Okay. Thank you. I don't have any further questions, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next witness, Mr. Uh, Todd. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to call Ms. Fletcher. Okay. Ms. Fletcher, we'll take some testimony from you. So if you would raise your right hand, we'll have you sworn in. We'll proceed. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Todd. Thank you, Honor. 
Ms. Fletcher, why could Macy not attend counseling before school starts? Um, Macy is in a web leader program that she was accepted into the year before. And that program um, was a, a, a two week duration before school started. And it was agreed upon that comforts of home would be used on 610, correct? Yes. So why couldn't she have done counseling before this two week period or during this two week period or anything of that nature? So I guess I, I'm confused. She she was seen on 718. So she did she did her intake then. And then when once that intake happened, then that's when we um talked about the scheduling and the conflict with trying to find a counselor from Comforts of Home. They couldn't find a counselor to fit my work schedule, Macy's schedule. And from 719, Macy's school started on 819. So there was only a window of that one month period of time. On 718, the testimony from a third party neutral is that you indicated Macy could not start scheduling before school. Why did you state that? I did not state that. When we talked after the Macy had her intake count, intake session, I got on there to talk with her, which was Dawn, and we just were going back and forth with schedule and schedules. My schedule, my work schedule. I, I, I have to Macy has to use my laptop for the counseling sessions. So then um, I have to make sure I'm home. So I have to um, make sure that she's available to get on the Zoom call. So it's either it's quicker for me to do that instead of coming home to pick her up and then taking her to the counseling office. So are these by Zoom? The intake was, yes. Okay. And are the counseling sessions by Zoom? Um, the This last one was, yes. So why couldn't Macy just use her phone? I guess, I mean, that's a possibility. I I. And why did I don't it know take if there's Zoom minutes? on her? I don't know if there's Zoom on her cell phone. So there was, there was never. I just assumed that she was going to use my laptop. So there was no. And why couldn't she be scheduled before four o'clock? Because my work schedule. I'm not out of work until before then. Why do you need to be there? I I just said it was just because of because she was using my computer. And uh, why did it take you two weeks by your own testimony to call back um, to get an appointment scheduled? Well, I guess what, what, are you, what, what are you referring to as far as taking two weeks when? I don't know what. So uh, there allegedly was a voicemail left for you on 813 to follow up on scheduling, correct? Correct. And then... Uh, the testimony is that you called back on August 28th. Is that correct? Correct. Why would it take two weeks to call them back? So within that time, I actually had um, some personal matters that I had to take care of uh, medically. Um, and as well as Macy's um, school, um, it was a, it, my work schedule. I work at Firekeepers and I had two um, concerts. So I had to... Um, I, I, there was absolutely no intent to not get Macy in any of these counseling sessions or, or to, to further this, but um, that I do have Macy full time and that is back to school um, school um, items that she had with her web leader program as well. Um, school shopping. Um, yeah, there was a lot of factors that went into that. And I mean, how long would this phone call take? Five minutes, 10 minutes? To, to call them? When you called them to schedule the appointment, how long yeah. did that phone call take? Five minutes? Um, well, when I, yeah, I guess so, yeah. Okay. And uh, is it accurate that we filed our motion on 9-4? Yeah. And did she have an appointment set uh, before 9-4? Yes. When? Um, she had her appointment on the, she had her appointment on the 18th, 918th. I'd have to go back and look through the exact time, but she did have her appointments set because we had our findings, um, hearing, I think that was the third, fourth. 
but when did you set her appointment? I don't have the exact date. I don't, I can't, as far as the exact time when I set the appointment and called them. And when did you actually reach out to Margaret Hunter to facilitate co-parent counseling? Um, I actually reached out to Margaret. I would say it was pretty close to, um, I would say August, in the beginning of August, maybe even late July, because we started working through my insurance stuff with firekeepers. I had to oh. speak with her. She had to, I had to actually call my work. They had to get back in contact with her. So it was a lot of back and forth. And, and so if Ms. Hunter indicated that um, in August 16th that she had not gotten with you to set an appointment, would that statement be inaccurate? I would say that it would not necessarily be inaccurate. It wasn't necessarily that I hadn't been in contact with her. We just didn't have an appointment set yet because of my insurance. We didn't want to set an appointment yet if there was going to be a big huge cost and so that that was the only reason behind that what have you done to expedite any of this process um especially with margaret i had to keep going back and forth with my work her and getting that figured out with the insurance so there was actually quite a lot to do with that i, I don't know why i don't know if it's because of my work i don't know if it's because of the way they have things set up but her billing they have to get back and they have to get back with fire keepers and send the bill. So there was a lot to do with that. So there was a, you know, so I, I would say quite a, a lot, actually. What have you done to expedite the counseling with Macy? Um, I'm solely the one responsible for doing all of this scheduling, um, getting her there, um, working through time frames. So, I, and as a matter of fact, I've done it for the last year with Miradessa. So I've not only am now responsible for doing it going forward, I've been doing it for last year and prior to that. And you keep bringing up Miradessa cats. Are you aware that the court said the parties are no longer going to use Miradessa cats? I was just referring to her because I was the one taking her to all those appointments. That's the only reason why I brought her up. Why do your Our Family Wizard messages continue to indicate things about Meridessa cats? The only time I messaged or mentioned Meridessa was prior to us talking about agreeing to comforts of home. I just, I just simply stated I don't understand why we're making this change because Macy is very happy with Meridessa. And that's all, that I just stated that in the OFW app. Not sure why we're making this change, but okay. And And is that why you've been slow to facilitate this change? No, absolutely not. And why have you not communicated any of your alleged uh, uh, reasons for not doing co-parent counseling quickly with Mr. Franzman? I would say there's quite a, there's, there is a lot of communication. It's just, there's not every single message that you guys are seeing. There's a lot of back and forth messages between Paul and myself. And why did it take two weeks, more than two weeks, for you to respond to Mr. Franzman about whether or not Macy was in counseling? I, I that was strictly just because of what was going on personally with me. There, there was no other, there was no other back reason or, you know, bad reason for that. Nothing further, Your Honor. Nothing further, Ms. Henderson. Uh, any uh, direct? Yes, thank you. Ms. Fletcher, did you rely on Mr. Franzman's statement that he made in June of 2024, specifically June 19, that was admitted as our exhibit, that he will set up counseling for Macy and co-parenting counseling for you? Yeah, yes. Objection, Your Honor, I, I, I believe we understand the argument, and I don't think any testimony about this is going to make it any further. Well, I'll allow her to testify to it and we'll move on. So despite that reliance, you, in fact, did bring Macy to the intake, correct? Correct. And did you, in fact, refuse to set any counseling up before school starts or no. how did that go? So we just discussed um, afterwards after Macy was done talking with um Don, we just discussed schedules. 
um, briefly. Um, she was going through her um, computer to try to find a counselor that would work within their side. Um, I relayed to her my work schedule, um, some conflicts that I would have coming up from, you know, going forward. Um, and really, honestly, I didn't even, it wasn't, it wasn't my idea to start her when school started. It was just a, a um, like a next step, like a bullet point day or like a something. Next to available look, day. Yes. Look, something to look forward to, you know, going forward. It wasn't necessarily, oh, I have to, we have to do it this time or that time. I didn't, I just was relying on them to tell me when, when she needed to be seen. So um, when I was speaking about my schedule, my work schedule, I relayed that, you know, I don't get out of work till four. I'm just assuming that Macy was going to be using, you know, my electronics she has for, you know, everything else that she's done for the past, you know, four, three years, you know, in, in doing counseling. Um, and then um, I did actually relay Macy's schedule as far as the things that were coming up that Macy was going to have to attend. And it was, it was Dawn that stated to me, just as a, you know, it wasn't like. Objection, Your Honor. Dawn was um, here to testify. When we were speaking, sorry, when we were speaking about the schedule, um, it was said to. Objection. Sustained. You can't say what somebody else told you. Thank you. Um, the school was brought up. Um, and that that that's that was like a pinpointed time. But let's look at that time. Okay. It wasn't. It wasn't. Hey, Macy's not going to go to not going to go to counseling, and we're going to wait till school starts. Which by the, when the eighteenth going on to school it was only a month time frame. So we it, it was it wasn't a, a huge amount of time. As far as schedules go, so, um, so yeah, it was, it was basically it, just do two schedules. So it was her, theirs and in mine and Macy's and in my work schedule. That, that was it. Okay, and um, you in fact had a very hard time getting a hold of comforts of home uh, following um, this voicemail and your return call to them to actually talk to somebody and get on the schedule and explain the letter. Is that correct? Objection correct. meeting. Sustained. Take care. What was the objection? A leading. Okay. It, well, technically, Your Honor, it is my cross. Mr. It is not your, not your cross of your client. It's your direct. Okay. Um, Ms. Fletcher, can you please tell the court what efforts it took you to actually speak to somebody at Comforts of Home regarding the scheduling this and this whole issue that uh brought up the writing of that letter um it was a it was pretty intense i mean i couldn't i couldn't get anybody to answer me back i would call the office they would um refer me to somebody else um to the point where i finally had to go into the office i couldn't get anybody um through their phone or you know somebody that call me back or to answer and I, I finally went there and just asked if I could talk to somebody, a supervisor or somebody that would be able to help me. And so um, once I did that, it, it became another huge issue. They um, I just let them know what was going on. I, you know, I, I didn't agree because I was the one that spoke with Don and I know our conversation. And so I, 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 you know, I did not agree with what this they were stating. So I needed to talk to somebody and then trying to get them to help me and they call me back. It was almost impossible. They were not very willing. They were not cooperative and they were really unprofessional. And in fact, you were able to get the owner of the practice finally write a letter in response. And that only happened after several visits. Correct. And Miss uh, Lawrence testified in her um, earlier testimony about that letter. Is that the letter that you were able to get? Yes. Okay. And the letter was written by the owner of the practice? Correct. Okay. So Macy now did have an appointment on September 18th. Yes. Does she have any other appointments scheduled? She has one scheduled for October 2nd. Okay. 
And at any point, did you intend to delay her counseling or otherwise get in the way of her getting counseling? No, no, there, there's been no delay. I, I mean, I, I've, I've been doing this for now going on four years with Macy with counseling. So, I mean, there is absolutely no reason why me delaying counseling would make any sense in this situation. Okay. Thank you. Uh, tell us about uh, Margaret Hunter. Uh, when we, the parties agreed on using her as co-parent counselor, what did you do to set that up? Uh, I called her. I called Margaret um, after that. And actually, Paul was, he did send that message in June saying he was going to set it up. But I did just want to verify um, with her um, the the financial portion of it, because I do have issues um, with Paul not responding to me with medical bills concerning Macy. And I didn't want to get not stuck having to pay for this whole portion. But when I'm sorry to reference Meredessa, but Meredessa, I was the one that had to continually push Paul to help me pay for the, um, you know, the, the split of the bills. And that was an issue. So I wanted to get in front of it and talk with her and, you know, try to get that stuff figured out with the, with the insurance stuff. How long did it take you to figure out the insurance stuff? Um, it took, it took like a few weeks because like I said, I had to go back to my employer. I had to, um, there was another number that I had to call from firekeepers. They gave me this number called them, they got in contact with her. And then um, I was honestly just kind of waiting to see what Paul was doing because he was the one that let me know that he was going to be doing all that. So I'm just kind of, I was kind of doing it on my end with the insurance and the, that portion of it. And then it was, it just kind of was like, could it in a standstill, I guess. And despite sending you that message in June, he did not in fact follow up with you stating, Hey, I had my intro. Have you had yours no. or anything along those lines? Okay. No. And tell tell the court, have you had any communications with Ms. Hunter since that time? And do you have appointments scheduled? Yes, we already had our, our intake. I already had that appointment. And then I have another appointment set for October 3rd with her. Okay. So, so Monday. And is it news to you to hear that Mr. Franzman thought you might have an appointment today at 6? Yeah, I didn't hear or know anything about that. Okay. Um, do you intend to attend your appointment on October 3rd with Ms. Hunter? Yes. And do you intend to facilitate Macy attending her appointment on October 2nd? Yes. And why do you think it's important for you to facilitate and actually make sure Macy does get on the call for counseling? Um, I mean, this has been... A very hard situation for Macy. Um, she need she needs to talk with someone. I'm fully, fully agreeing of that. She's um, you know not she doesn't have a relationship with her dad. Um, it's been a lot of a lot of years of what's been going on, um, and she's she's it's definitely definitely necessary. Since it falls on your shoulders to make sure Macy attends her appointments. Is it reasonable for you to assume she would just do it on her own without you reminding her or being present? No, I, she's, she, she was very, um, Macy, she was not wanting to change the counselors. So I would, it was very important that I was the one that made sure that she got on that call and continues to get on the calls without you present, do you think Macy may not log on to the counseling call? I'm not confident that she would do it on her own. And when those appointments happen, do you listen in or is it completely confidential and Macy is um, in the Zoom call with a counselor? Yeah, it's confidential. And, and um, I, you know, I handle that just the same way I would with any of the court proceedings. You know, that's that's Macy. And I don't want to put Macy in that predicament and have to feel that. OK. And uh, um, at this time, regarding the Our Family Wizard, are you willing to make sure that your responses are 
to Mr. Franzman within 24 hours as he requested or another reasonable time? Um, I would say yes. Um, however, um, I do receive messages from Paul that are um, uh, that are very kind of alarming in nature at times. And I'm worried about that particular wording, if it could be worded different as far as what we need to be responding to and how we need to respond to, because up until this point, there's been nothing to state that there's a particular time frame. Um, but he does reach out with with strange messages. And then I don't, you know, definitely don't want to be in this situation again and have to be in contempt for a message that doesn't require a response or um, isn't necessary. Give the court an example of those messages that you receive on our family wizard. Um, I mean, there's been just, I mean, just days ago, he would reach out to me regarding um, uh, boar said meat and that I need to get it out of my house. And then that starts becoming an issue because then if I don't respond, then it becomes that I'm not concerned about Macy and I'm not worried about her well-being. So there's a lot of messages, a lot of things that are not being displayed at, at these hearings and at these times, or at, you know, for, for all these isolated motions that are being filed. So what can you see happening if any specific timeline is not explained or if if it's not put in the order that only messages that require a response need to be responded to what what's your concern with specification it'll be misconstrued of my intentions it'll be misconstrued and taken the wrong way um just as i feel that all the last two two years have been in all this court all these court proceedings would you anticipate another motion? Absolutely. Okay. But you have no problem with responding to the messages that actually require a response? Correct. Yes. And would you want that rule to apply to both parties? Yes. Okay. Um, is there anything else you would like the court to know today in relation to Macy's counseling, co-parenting counseling, or our family wizard? Um, I would just like to relay that I have I, I have been responsible for having Macy in counseling for not just this portion of time and not just the portion of time with Meridessa. I have, you know, there was years prior of me putting Macy in counseling. So for me to be these motions being filed based on me dragging my feet and things of that nature are, are just I mean, it's. I don't even understand how, how Paul can do that because I, I have been the one willing and moving forward and trying to help her and trying to help her with her, her life, her, her relationship with her dad. Um, it's been, it's been very, very difficult for Macy. She struggles all the time. Um, and it, it, it's very hard for me to try to help my daughter through all these things and then have to continue to fight in court and continue to provide, you know, defending, you know, what, what's going on when I'm not the one that has put my daughter in this position, but I'm still here helping. I'm still here taking her. I'm still making sure she's, um, you know, okay on her end. And as far as the co-parenting counseling, um, yeah, I, I mean, I have no, um, I have, I don't really have kind of a stance on that. Me and Paul have had an insanely um, toxic, I mean, it, the relationship it, it, that, that comes from him and I, I mean, I, it, it's, it's abusive and I don't, I mean, it's, 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 it's for the counselor to, to determine. So, um, but as far as um, OFW, um, the app, I, I, I think that goes in line with, um, you know, we, we did have Mayor Dessa on there to be able to help us facilitate our, um, you know, the ways that these things are, you know, I don't need to receive messages about Boris said meet and then make it seem like I'm not worried about my daughter. And then, you know, Mayor Dessa was there as a third party to just kind of see some of this stuff. And, and that was incorporated into all this. And now that's not there. So now, um, you know, now, now. I think that just opens it up for more problems. And that's why we had Meredessa as that third party um, to, to help us with that. With um, 
our family wizard, would you be willing to have Ms. Hunter added as a third party if that was recommended by her? Absolutely. And um, as it relates to our family wizard, um, does Mr. Franzman always respond to your messages? No. So for instance, recently you asked him about a vacation that potentially would include Macy. Is that- Objection, Your Honor. Leading. It, Just yeah, I'll, re I'll re rephrase, Your Honor. Um, did you ask Mr. Franzman about a vacation recently? I did. Tell the court a little bit about the communication pattern and response to your questions. The um, There was information um, that I received um, and I was able to see on uh, Macy's cell phone from Paul and it was him asking her if she wanted to go on a vacation in September, which would have been this September. He sent that in August. Uh, I don't have the exact date, but I think it was the beginning of August and just stating that he was going on a vacation and he would like uh, Macy to go. And um, I reached out to him once I had received that, once you know I was shown that message from my daughter and I reached out to him asking him if he was going to let me know about this vacation. Um, and if that had any, you know, if that was going to have any issue with any kind of counseling, because we obviously we're having these disputes about the counseling and, and scheduling. Um, and then it was um, told to me from him. And actually, I think it's actually in OFW. Um, I could, you know, if I needed to provide that information, he said it didn't, it, if Macy didn't agree to go, he's not going to let me know, or he, he'll let me know if Macy agrees to go, he'll let me know details. Um, and then come to find out he did actually go on the vacation. I did reach back out to him in OFW asking him, you know, you're out of town. Um, is this going to have any issues with any of the co-parenting stuff since we're trying to work through the scheduling? And he said that it, it doesn't matter if he's out of town. It has nothing to do with that, with the scheduling of co-parenting and um, any, any opt-in is out of town. And I find out, you know, weeks and weeks later. So he, in fact, does not always respond directly to your questions related to Macy. Correct. Okay. And you would have no issue with the rule applying to both of you in terms of response. Correct. As it relates to Macy's um, counseling, in your experience as the scheduling party, the setting up party, why was the delay caused? Oh, the delay was caused um, in the beginning because we were trying to figure out, or not figure out, but we were getting the intake paperwork. And then um, during that time when we were trying to do that, they had to set up a patient portal. So um, Paul was the one that made the initial contact. So they consider that the I don't know what they consider that the, the responsible party or whatnot. So he um, started off that portal and then we had a court hearing. And at that time, actually at that court hearing, um, they were making it seem as if I wasn't doing what I wanted to do at the time. I didn't know I was, I had been in contact with the office, um, but he had the login information for the portal and didn't relay that to me. So he had the login information from, from the patient portal because he set it up. I didn't have it, so I couldn't get Macy's forms filled out. And then from that time, I've also learned that he did try to use Comforts of Home Counseling in 2022, December of 2022. Um, relevance. Okay, Ms. Henderson, what's the relevance of something happening in 2022? Your Honor, it goes directly to the counseling and the part of the delay that was caused due to the fact that the portal was set up in 2022 and my client had no information about the login and password. She's already stated that. Okay. Well, move on from that, Rebecca. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, so at that, at that time, I didn't have the login information. Um, and then um, going forward. So then, you know, getting her um, signed up and getting all those paperwork, getting the paperwork filled out and then getting her then once again scheduled. So that would, I mean, there was, there was a, a delay in the time from her, lasting Merdessa to, to the July 18th um, intake. <clears throat> and as it relates to the two weeks um, that it took you to return the, the phone call from Comforts of Home, 
Um, you mentioned you had some medical issues without going into a lot of detail. Were you under um, severe medical care during that two week period of time? Were you sick? Yes. Okay. A and that was part of the delay in returning that phone call? Yes. Okay. At this point, are you willing to facilitate the counseling, co-parenting counseling and communication to the best of your ability with the father of your child? Yes. Thank you. I have no further questions. Mr. Todd, any uh, recross? Um, very briefly. Uh, Ms. Fletcher, when was your intake with Ms. Hunter? Um, that was the 24th. Of what? September. Two days ago? Yes. And so you admit that Conference of Home was agreed, or uh, Margaret Hunter was agreed on 610, and you said it took a few weeks, so we'll say two or three, um, to get the uh, issue ironed out with the insurance, correct? Correct. So that would put you at, um, I, I mean, there's still a three-month gap between that point and when the intake was. I honestly, for the co-parenting counseling, I've been really focused on what Macy and, and making sure she was, you know, this counseling was handled. I was waiting. Paul told me he was going to make the appointment and he had yet to let me know that the appointment was made or what I needed to do with that. So. And did Ms. Hunter reach out to you to set, to set an intake? Um, as far as setting an intake, we were just going back and forth with the insurance stuff. As far as okay, going. Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. Anything else, uh, Ms. Henderson? Uh, nothing further, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Any other witnesses, Mr. Todd? No, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Henderson, any witnesses? Uh, no, Your Honor. I will uh, rely on my client's testimony. Okay. Okay. Well, that concludes the uh, proofs in this matter. Uh, Mr. Todd, any uh, closing argument? Yes, Your Honor. We do believe we've shown by clear and convincing evidence that Ms. Fletcher has failed to do what she can to get Macy in counseling in a reasonable time, failed to do what she can to have co-parent counseling occur within a reasonable time, and failed to use our family wizard within an appropriate amount of time. Uh, the parties agreed to use Comforts of Home on 610. Um, in essence, even after the intake, the intake was on 718, um, and it's been more than two months to get Macy into counseling. Uh, there's, in essence, an argument that my client could somehow set an appointment, but uh, to be quite frank, I think everybody understands that that's a little bit ludicrous because he's unable to contact Macy. He's unable to contact Ms. Fletcher, um, and so him setting an appointment uh, is, in essence, simply not going to happen. Um, he has been diligent in trying to facilitate that, uh, and it doesn't really make sense. She, Miss Fletcher, has stated, "Well, it's you know been two weeks here, two weeks there." Um, there is an indication that there was a call on eight nineteen. Well, there's an indication from a third party neutral witness that apparently counseling could not occur. Uh, that Miss Fletcher said counseling could not occur prior to school starting. So that's one month gone. And then on 819, um, the counselors called Ms. Fletcher and there was no response for over two weeks. So there's, uh, she, her statement is that um, on 826, she didn't call until 826 because she was allegedly doing school shopping. Yet her priority is to get Macy in counseling. That testimony doesn't really make sense and is at a very minimum inconsistent. And then a month, over a month after that is when Macy is actually indicating counseling. This is the biggest problem we have is that we need to actually file a motion until anything is done. And then we get to the hearing and they say, well, these things are done now. And so it shouldn't matter. And unfortunately, that's what we have to do. Same thing with the Our Family Wizard. 
uh, uh, having two more than two weeks to respond whether or not Macy's and counseling does not make any sense. Um, and the exhibit four that was submitted, I believe, is actually indicative more of Ms. Fletcher's response and that she tries to create this, uh, in essence, make a fight. So we believe that she should be held in contempt for failing to get Macy into counseling. In terms of the co-parent counseling, again, her testimony, in essence, was that it took a few weeks to get the um, to get the information ironed out re regarding insurance. So that would still put her sometime in the summer. And it to date, uh, her intake was two weeks was two days ago. Uh, again, this is something that wouldn't have occurred and didn't occur in essence until we filed our motion. So we're respectfully requesting the court hold her in contempt, require her to continue to use our family wizard and respond within 24 hours, continue to attend co-parent counseling and have that consistently attended, continue to have Macy to attend co-parent counseling, consistently attend. And I apologize, backtracking a little bit. Additionally, it's quite concerning that these appointments for Macy could have appeared by Zoom. And so there was really no need to set a particular time frame. Macy has a cell phone and Wi-Fi capability and she can attend Zoom on her own. So that is also quite concerning. We are respectfully also requesting attorney fees. This is the fifth show clause motion we have needed to file against Ms. Fletcher. Okay, Ms. Henderson, uh, closing. Your Honor, again, for the court to hold somebody in contempt, the court has to find uh, clearly and unequivocally that that party had the intent to not obey a court order or otherwise undermine the authority of the court. The testimony here, along with the testimony from the neutral third party that Mr. Todd brought, stated that the counseling office have not uh, found any intent to not cooperate with counseling or uh, not schedule counseling for Macy. The change of counselors happened for court's information because progress with Meredith Katz was not happening due to Mr. Franzman not following her recommendations. Objection. Yeah, that is that's sustained. That's there's been no evidence in this case about that, Miss. Anderson, so don't allude to evidence that's, that hasn't been introduced. Um, the new counselor always requires scheduling, always requires uh, facilitation of appointments. Ms. Fletcher testified Macy would not have logged into counseling herself. Macy does not want to do this counseling. Macy does not want to repeat everything she's already stated to Meridessa to a different person. So another person has to be there to facilitate that. Ms. Fletcher did testify as to her work schedule, as to other um, limitations that were in place, specifically availability of counselors and Macy's schedule as well. So there's absolutely no intent not to have Macy in counseling. And if Mr. Franzman could not get a response from Ms. Fletcher, who testified during that time she had some significant medical issues, he could always call the counseling office and check it himself or go on the portal and check if the appointment has been scheduled. He has not done that. As it relates to a co-parenting counselor, again, we do not have Ms. Hunter here to testify uh, as to any allegations that Mr. Uh, Todd is bringing forward. But from my client's testimony, there were insurance issues that had to be ironed out. She has had an intake appointment. She was relying on Mr. Franzman's statement that he was going to set up both the counseling for the child and co-parenting counselor. And he has not followed up on the co-parenting counseling at all for almost three months with Ms. Fletcher, which was testified to. So again, Your Honor, it's disingenuous for him to say, I will do something and then turn around and file yet another motion that is completely punitive in nature. The issues have been addressed and should be brought up to the co-parenting co counselor prior to involving the court and taking up a lot of court's time and costing both parties a significant amount of money. 
as it relates to our family wizard, again, we have no objection to prompt responses. However, that needs to apply to both parties. And uh, as Ms. Fletcher testified, I can see that being misconstrued and turning into another motion that uh, she didn't respond within 24 hours, but it took her 24 hours and five minutes to respond to a message, Your Honor. So I would ask for the court to be careful in how that is worded uh, to avoid uh, more motions like this being brought up. Uh, if there was testimony that both parties are, in fact, um, not really effective in their communication with our family wizard, which is why it would be prudent for Ms. Hunter to be added as a third party, and it would be prudent for them to continue with co-parenting counseling. Again, there is no testimony that my client had the intent to thwart or otherwise not follow the court order, Your Honor. There were scheduling issues, there were health issues, there were availability issues, and frankly, Mr. Franzman could have also made steps or asked if he could help to set up appointments, but yet he just asked, hey, have you set it up? Have you set it up? Have you set it up? This is all on my client's shoulders when they, on paper, have joined custody, yet my client is responsible for all of it. Your Honor, I respectfully ask that she not be found in contempt due to the fact that there's absolutely no intent on her part to not follow the court orders. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Todd? Your Honor, I, I would just say, you know, in essence, res ipsa loquitur. Um, the parties agreed on 610 to have this all happen. Today, we are here more than three months later, and now it's finally happening after we file our show cause motion. Okay, thank you. Well, in this matter, the court would note that uh, intent, the contempt of court is governed by uh, MCL 600.1701, as well as uh, 600.1711, as well as Michigan Court Rule 3.606. Contempt of court is a willful act, omission, or statement that tends to impair the authority and impede the functioning of the court. The main primary purpose of contempt of court is to preserve the effectiveness and sustain the power of the court. Under MCL 600.1701, uh, it delineates 13 forms of contempt, uh, and one of those... Uh, is the disobeying any lawful order, decree, or process of the court. In this uh, particular matter, the court will note that uh, the parties have re alluded to and referred to basically three months that this has taken. The court notes that the order that required the counseling in this matter was back on uh, May 23rd, 2024. So we're actually talking four months. The order provided that the parties would, by no later than 6-15-24, mutually agree to a counselor in this uh, particular matter and utilize uh, comforts of home as well. And that that uh, six fifteen was as it relates to co-parent counseling. The parties did agree on 6-10, but the court would note, again, that's May when the order went into place, so the parties could have initiated and got the process going actually faster than that if they would have agreed sooner. I don't fault any person for not doing it when, again, they were following the the uh, guidelines of the court saying they had to do it by 615 and they did it by 610. But I find it disingenuous that, uh, again, that was put in place in May and we still have that delay in time in this uh, particular case. Court notes that uh, Ms. Henderson looks at and says, well, that uh, you have to show willfulness, they have to show intent. Uh, court will note that the court can infer intent from a person's inaction or neglect and that the court, they don't have to intentionally say, well, I, 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 I I'm intentionally not agreeing. You can denote that from, again, their acts, the way they respond, and whether they have followed the orders of the court. In this matter, it appears, as we look at the timelines, that the 
plaintiff has followed the orders of the court only when the defendant filed additional action to have her held in contempt. And then when she was facing hearings, either motion hearings or evidentiary hearings through the referee or through the court, then she would take action and things would occur at that uh, particular point. So court notes that uh, when we looked at the testimony of Don Lawrence uh, working at Comforts of Home, that uh, she had been introduced as Defendant's Exhibit 2, and that's the letter to Defendant, which she wrote, claiming that it was accurate. And that said that the plaintiff said that she did not want to start until after school started. She has tendered an explanation for that, but saying that, uh, well, that Pacey had some uh, program, a two-week program in the summer and that her work schedule uh, was difficult. She wasn't available until four or after four o'clock. Uh, however, the court uh, does note that, uh, again, that uh, there are scheduling issues and there were insurance issues. The insurance issues, however, as pointed out repeatedly by Mr. Todd, were a period of two weeks. Out of this entire three month or three and a half month period uh, since the order was entered, uh, two weeks is infinitesimal when you consider that whole particular period of time. The child, the, uh, the appointment uh, was finally set up in this uh, particular matter, scheduled uh, sometime in, in August and in my notes, I don't, I've got it here, but I just don't know. But it, the child just had her uh, first appointment on 9 18 24, follow up appointment on 10 2 24. And uh, court notes that, uh, again, that there was a substantial delay. And obviously, the uh, purpose in the order of the court was to get the child and the parties and particularly uh, the defendant involved with the child so that we could, in fact, eliminate any impediment to the parenting time and the relationship between the parties and attempt to, again, facilitate a uh, resolution of those particular problems. Uh, the plaintiff testified that, uh, again, that uh, there were various text messages between the parties. Some respond, some not responded to. Uh, she had uh, noted that, uh, again, that I would note in this matter as it relates to those re responses that the most recent ones that were testified to were uh, in, I think it was September 5, 2024, in which the plaintiff sent a message to the defendant, and that was admitted as an exhibit. And then um, basically six months, excuse me, six minutes later, he responded to that a message. And uh, that, in fact, uh, it's been alleged by her, well, he doesn't respond to the substance of it. Well, in that message, he did respond to it. He said, no, that didn't happen that way. And he did in fact state, believe that there were some lies, et cetera. But notwithstanding that, he responded to the fact that it didn't happen the way that it had been, re uh, I guess you'd say, reported to her or the way she had taken it in this matter. So there was quick response in this particular matter, but the parties both have stated that the, their difficulty in having responses in a timely fashion. As a result, if I note that the referee had talked about the uh, the Our Family Wizard, the court is going to order that the parties again communicate through Our Family Wizard. I'm going to extend the time hour and say that the parties would respond within 48 hours of uh, the message, you know, provided that the message pertains to the child. If there are other issues that the parties are bringing up, uh, all I would do is say to the parties, you might want to send a response and say that doesn't pertain to Macy and, you know, I'm not going to respond to it or I'll respond to you later, something of that nature. So get that in within the 48 hours. And again, it will apply to both parties in this particular case. Um, 
in this matter, the court uh, notes that the uh, I believe that the uh, the defendant testified his intake with uh, um, comforts of home was on uh, 7 1824 uh, that uh, that he again continued to message the plaintiff about this particular matter the court will note that he did stay or state in one message that he would set that up but and the plaintiff relies substantially on the statements that he would uh that he would in fact set that up uh, the court notes that uh clearly in this particular matter i think that was more of a uh on his part more of a say well okay i to get it done i will do that but recognizing in this case from a practical matter, it was going to happen that, in fact, uh, the defendant has a very little relationship with Macy. He obviously she she won't go on parenting time. So clearly he's not able to have, again, the relationship such that he could set up an appointment and go pick her up, take her to the appointment, take her back. And in fact, the court would question whether he has the ability to communicate with her to even set up an appointment in this particular case. So uh, the court does find that, again, relying upon that is, uh, as the plaintiff has attempted to do, is basically an illusory promise. And it's ludicrous to believe that it's going to be to fruition when, as she herself acknowledges, in the uh, time previously with Meredessa Katz, she had set up all the appointments for well over a year. She had taken uh, responsibility for all that. So to think simply one comment by him that he would uh, set up the appointments, uh, I don't think either of the parties would take that seriously or rely upon that. It was just a uh, offhand comment in hopes to, uh, again, move the counseling forward in this uh, matter. Court notes, and again, as I state, that uh, oh, just for reference, uh, the uh, letter or the uh, the text on the setting up the appointment I just came across was on six nineteen twenty four, in which he stated he would uh, set up and get back to her on the counseling. In this matter, I, again, we've heard the testimony of Ms. Lawrence, as well as the parties in this case. Uh, there was communication from Comforts of Home, uh, a voicemail from Comforts of Home to the plaintiff on 8 13 24. After the court would note, after the uh, uh, insurance issues, but I note that that was with uh, Margaret Hunter, but I I do note the insurance issues were taken care of by that point from what she had said and testified to. That she didn't get back to comforts of home until 8-28-2024. Uh, delay basically uh, 15 days. Uh, uh, she said she had no intent to not uh, get into the counseling, but she had work issues and health issues that... Uh, impeded her in some way, but uh, in cross-examination by Mr. Todd, the court will note, she acknowledged that when she finally called him back, it was a conversation of no more than five minutes, and uh, therefore, her delay of two weeks is uh, not justified and unreasonable in this uh, particular matter. She also points out, well, I was solely responsible for the appointments. That's when she alluded to the Meredessa Katz issues and Therefore, that somehow should excuse her in uh, uh, following the court orders in this particular matter. She says that uh, she had no intent to delay the counseling and that it would make sense for her to delay that as she had, again, previously 
had Macy involved in constantly with Meredith Katz that she somehow wanted this to go forward. But when the court looks at this, uh, she had testified as well. Well, she was waiting to see, and this was her words, she was waiting to see what uh, defendant was doing. Well, as stated, defendant wasn't doing anything because it was her responsibility to set that up. And she was, uh, again, not accepting and, uh, again, fulfilling that responsibility. Based upon the record as a whole, the court will find that the plaintiff did willfully violate the court order through, again, her inaction and neglect in uh, following through on the court order. So the court will hold her in contempt of court. Uh, what the court will do as a sanction in this matter, because the court does note that uh, <clears throat> she had been held in contempt of court previously. There were other motions to hold her in contempt of court. Uh, what the court is going to do is the court, Ms. Fletcher, the court could, in fact, put you in jail and incarcerate you for a period of time. I don't see that as appropriate in this uh, particular matter uh, at this time, but that could happen in the future if, in fact, uh, you do not comply with the orders of the court. But the court will, in this matter, as a sanction, the court would award attorney fees in this matter to Mr. Todd. Uh, Mr. Todd, you're going to have to, uh, again, prepare that and submit the uh, request and the documentation as it relates to the attorney fees. And that would be for the uh, motion for the enforcement as well as these proceedings in this uh, particular matter. The court would order that at such time as we're able, well, I can address that later, that the court would order that that would be, uh, those would be paid within uh, 60 days from the date that the court finalizes and makes a determination as to the attorney fees if there are additionally, if there's a reasonableness dispute, then we'll have to address that at a hearing as well. The court would then simply order that the parties would continue to comply with all of the orders of the court and uh, ask that uh, Mr. Todd, that you would uh, prepare the appropriate order in this matter and you can submit it under seven day notice of entry. With that, Mr. Todd, is there anything else that you believe the court needs to address? or has an address before we conclude? Um, no, nothing. I, I guess just one question is if you wanted me to include the attorney fee calculation within my seven-day order or two separate orders. Um, what you can do, why don't you do this? Is you, you can include that in the order if you make that calculation, et cetera. Then if Ms. Henderson... Uh, objects to the reasonableness of that, then we would have to have a hearing. And I assume if she objects, then the order will not get entered at that uh, particular time. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Ms. Henderson, is there anything you believe the court has not addressed or needs to address before we conclude? Your Honor, I would ask for a bill of costs to be submitted as part of the proposed order and for me to be able to object to that separately. Uh, rather than just a number, I want to see what the attorney's fees uh, specifically were incurred for. Well, the court the court had alluded to asking Mr. Todd to prepare the appropriate uh, paperwork, which would be the bill of costs, as I stated, and uh, then you'd have you'd have the right to object to that if you if again, as I stated, as to the reasonableness uh, of those uh, particular uh, charges. With that, the court will now uh, conclude the record. It sure seems to me like mom was not trying, was trying to not comply with the order. It seemed to me like she was dragging her feet and she didn't want to do it. And then the attorney said that the, the child doesn't want to do it. Well, that tells me that mom has been putting something in the child's ear. That's just my opinion. I don't know, but that's just my opinion. And this dad wants to unify with his daughter. So he wants to do it as soon as possible. Time's wasting, time's ticking by, and the insurance issues could have been handled on day one, not months later. 
I mean, if, if she had really wanted to do this, it would have happened. And then now the attorney wants to say, well, she's in compliance now. So she wasted months of, of dad's time with his daughter. And I guess that's not important to her. It's not important to mom. So of course it's not going to be important to the attorney. But I think that contempt is well-deserved. I think that the judge, I mean, and this isn't her first contempt. So the judge needs to be a little stronger with each contempt and maybe throw her in jail. I mean, maybe that's the solution. Then dad would get his daughter. It just seems like that might be work. That might be a way to work it out. Anyway, I know that's drastic, but Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for sticking with me through my issues here. I really do appreciate it and uh, I'll see you next time. Hopefully I'll have something worked out. Thank you.